Welcome, class, to a workshop on Coach Joe Rules. In this lesson, we will review Coach Joe Rule number one, which states, Utilize the five solid principles. According to Wikipedia, SOLID is a mnemonic acronym for five design principles intended to make object-oriented designs more understandable, flexible, and maintainable. This means SOLID is an acronym. It represents these five design principles, and it helps make your application understandable, flexible, and maintainable. Let's take a closer look. Here is a game control class with many methods needed for an adventure game. The problem with this solution, it is breaking the S in solid. S stands for Single Responsibility Principle, which states, A class should have one and only one reason to change, or have only one responsibility. The Game Control class can change how to run the game and the player input commands and the attack process and much more. If the class description includes the word AND, it has more than one responsibility. Organize these methods into separate classes that have one responsibility. This is better. Moving on with the game, let's build a monster class to hold an orc monster. Some simple methods could be getting a monster name and attacking with a weapon. This works. Now that one monster works, let's add another. We can add a parameter for monster name and return the result of the attack for a specific monster. This works. I'm sure you can predict we will need to add more monsters. Like a wizard. The problem with this solution, it is breaking the O in solid. O stands for Open Close Principle, which states, Software entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Open for extension is done when a child class is created with new functionality by using inheritance or an interface. Closed for modification means a well-written parent class should not be changed when new functionality is needed. With an interface solution, Monster is the parent. Orc Goblin and Wizard are children that implement the interface. The monster interface is closed for modification or does not change. However, it is open for extension by implementing more child classes. This works. Here is the same solution using inheritance. Monster is the parent class and should not be modified. Orc, Goblin, and Wizard are child classes and extend from monster. This also works. Staying with the inheritance approach, let's add a dragon class and let's allow a wizard to attack with his choice of weapon by adding in a parameter. The application compiles and runs, but the results don't make sense. Dragon cannot use a weapon, they breathe fire. And the wizard's weapon choice did not appear. The problem with this solution, it is breaking the L in solid. L stands for Liskov Substitution Principle, which states, Functions that use references to parent classes must be able to use objects of the child class without negative side effects. Variables and method parameters can have an object reference to a parent class. To honor the Liskov substitution principle, using a child class object to replace a parent class object should not have a negative effect. Here, two child class objects could not replace the parent class object. The wizard class didn't implement the same signature as the parent class, and the dragon class did not implement the parent's method. It used its own attack method, which has a negative effect. The Liskov substitution principle was not honored. Because there is a design flaw with the monster class, making a small change is not an open close principle issue and will help correct the Liskov substitution principle problem. Here, the monster class method is called attack, which accounts for more options. 
the dragon class now makes sense. The wizard now keeps track of its own current weapon and uses the same attack method signature. This now works fine and honors the principle. When working with interfaces, you could create several attack method options. Here, the monster class has a get name method along with three attack methods. Orc, Goblin, Wizard, and Dragon implement these interfaces. This will work. However, there are some strange results. Some monsters cannot breathe fire. Some monsters cannot cast a spell. The problem with this solution, it is breaking the I in solid. I stands for Interface Segregation Principle, which states, Clients should not be forced to implement interfaces they don't use. The monster interface should be split into smaller interfaces that more accurately define the expected behaviors. Now the monster interface has methods needed by all children. Other interfaces like Weapon Attack, Spell Attack, and Breathe Fire Attack can be implemented by the specific child that needs that behavior. Notice how the Dragon class can implement two or more different interfaces. Here are the monsters. Now this works. This example shows a game control class calling a simplified good attack class. Does anyone see a problem with these two classes? There is a dependency injection issue, but it's important to note the D in solid does not mean dependency injection. This is a common mistake. Let me illustrate dependency injection. The game control class should not be responsible for creating other classes it needs or is dependent on. They should be injected into the class with a constructor or a setter method. This helps with decoupling the creation of the dependent objects needed, allows dependencies to be replaced without changing the class code, and follows the dependency inversion principle. Now the classes needed by game controller are injected in at creation time. Watch what happens if we replace the good attack class with the better attack class. A change is also needed inside the game control class. These classes are considered to be tightly coupled together. Game control still knows the exact class it's dependent on. The problem with this solution, it is breaking the D in solid. D stands for dependency inversion principle which states, high level objects should not depend on low level implementation. Both should depend on abstractions. This means the high-level game control class should have no knowledge of the low-level better attack class. It should not know what methods are available or which methods to call. It should not know the class exists. No knowledge. To break the dependency, create an interface between the two classes. This will invert the flow of control and allow easier changes if a new attack class is used. With this solution, the high-level game control class has no knowledge of the attack class. The attack interface is an object reference injected into the constructor. Game control does not know which implementation of attack is being used. The run method calls the abstract method from the interface. Game control has no knowledge of any methods in the better attack class. Later, better attack class can be replaced by best attack class with no changes to the high-level game control class. This solution will work. I challenge you to get familiar with the five solid principles and utilize them in your applications. Leave a comment down below with situations where these principles have helped. Look for other helpful Coach Joe videos. Remember, future senior developers, make it work, prove it works, then make it better. Ready? Break!